Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this is the first of a five part series on lever locks and lever lock picking. And I thought for the first part, I would start right at the beginning, which is what types of lever lock are there out there? How do they work? And what's all the weird terminology we use when we're talking about lever locks and their keys? My reasoning being is that once we understand what leave locks are and how they work, it makes the videos later on, which are how to pick them, a whole lot easier to understand. And it also means that uh, we'll hopefully use the right words for the right locks. So where do we start? Well, there's quite a range of locks here, but I think the first lock to start on is this one here. This may look like an old rusty lock, and well, that's because it is an old and rusty lock. But it's also in its own way quite beautiful. You can see it's been handmade. If we turn it around, you can see that all the mechanism is there for you. Absolutely beautiful. And inside, we can see where the magic happens. There we go. So, this is an example of a warded lock, but it still has a lever in it. Look at the key that comes with this. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful old key. And if you look at the tip of this key, you can see that we have specific shapes cut out. And those shapes align with the warding on the inside of the lock. And you see that this is a diamond and bar warding. So you have the diamonds there and the bar at the bottom and this key does two things once it's cleared the warding it'll do two things there we go so first of all it will lift the lever out of the way which is sprung from the top and the tip of the key will engage with the talon in the bolt and slide the mechanism across. And of course, in reverse, it'll pick up the talon, lift up that lever, and there we go. You'll see that that will still lock itself down. Isn't that beautiful? And warded locks were one of the first type of lock in existence, going back to ancient China and ancient Rome. So the next lock I want to look at in detail is a rim latch lock. Here is one. And these have been around for a few hundred years. And they do look like a lever lock. And in a way, I suppose they still are. Some are more complicated than others. And the older they are, usually the better built they are and the more complicated their mechanism inside. But you can still buy these. This is absolutely brand new. And they're usually marketed for locking up sheds and the like although a lot of manufacturers say that they shouldn't be used unless they're in conjunction with another lock so let's turn let's uh, turn this over and I'll show you how this works so there we go and just got to be careful not to uh, <laughs> not to let that spring fly out but you'll see that the key comes up pushes on the lever grabs the bolt talon and pushes the bolt out. I can actually insert the key upside down on the other side because the two levers are sprung together even though they pivot separately. So again, I can push down the bottom lever although this one only serves to move the top lever to allow this little bolt stump to clear. This is really, this type of lock, this rim latch, is really about as basic as a lever lock mechanism you can get. It's got a working lever and the key can work upside down, um, either way up inside the lock to make this work. So this is really, really simple. But we're not going to focus on this because realistically, this is the lowest security lock um, of this type you can get, and it's not one which will be really picking. 
Before we move on to the modern locks, which we will learn how to pick, I think it's best that we actually start to look at some terminology. Let's have a look at some keys. So in front of us is a blank lever lock key. Just so we don't worry too much about what's going on with the key, just the main part. So first of all, we have the bow. This is of course the bit that you grab hold of when you want to turn the key. Then we have the shank. Then we have the collar and the collar acts most often as a stop so that the key isn't inserted too far into the lock. Then you have the throating, which is normally uh, the distance which is the thickness of the lock casing itself. Then you have the bit, the top is called the nose, and the bit, the bit <laughs> is attached to is called the pin. Now let's look at a cut key, and you'll see that there are some new features one of which is the bolt step, which is in a lot of lever locks, the part of the end of the key which throws the bolt, although it can sometimes be in the middle of the key. Then you have the lever steps, and actually the way that this key is cut, it really does look like steps. How deep those steps are cut are called the interval, so there are different intervals for different lever locks, depending on what their individual cut depths are. This key is actually a pipe key, and pipe keys are called such because, of course, they have a similarity to a pipe. They're not always hollow all the way down, but you can make keys using hollow pipe like that. Now, here are two keys with a couple of other little features which you do see and that are wards. Normally, they're just like a, the warded lock we looked at earlier to allow the key to pass through the warding on the inside of a lock. And then you have the collar ward, which often does the same thing. So let's look at the first type of lock which is still around, it's used loads and loads and loads still inside plenty of buildings, at least in the UK. And this is a non-curtain lever lock. It works with a key, and I can insert from the back so you can see what's happening. There we go, you can see the steps on the key there, including a bolt step. And what happens is that those lever steps engage with levers and they lift them to the correct height. The bolt step will grab the talon. And if all the levers are lifted to the correct height, the bolt stump will be able to clear the gate and open up. In reverse, it does the same. The key lifts the levers to the correct height, allows the bolt stump to travel through, and the key can pull or push, if you will, the bolt back to the closed position. So let's have a look at the parts of this lock in a little bit more detail there. So what you can see is the lever pack and in the lever pack, you have a number of levers. Those levers have a lever spring, which forces the levers down inside the lock. You can see the bolt, and the bolt has a bolt stump. The bolt stump cannot pass through the gating of that lever pack until every single one of those levers are lifted to the correct height, allowing the gating to align with the bolt stump. The key can then engage with the talon, which is a V-like notch in the bolt itself. And it can pull that bolt back and forth as long as the bolt stump is free to move inside that gating. Now, what I really like 
is that the spaces either side of that gating are called pockets. Isn't that cool? So you have pockets either side of the gating. And what makes the gating are the lever bars. So we call them gates, but you have a bar at the top on this one and a bar at the bottom with a gating in the middle. The big lump, which actually engages with the uh, other side of the door to lock it is of course called the bolt head. Then you have the pivot, which is where the lever eyes engage with. And you even have what they call the lanket hole. Isn't that cool? The lanket hole, which is really what engages with guides to allow that bolt to slide correctly to the left and to the right. Now what we have here before we move on to curtained lever locks is a lever padlock. And there's the inside of one. And I won't spend an awful lot of time talking about this, but it is worth talking about one of the features inside this because they are by and large exactly the same as nearly every other non-curtained lever lock in, in the way they are built and the way they work. The one thing which this particular lock has is a drill pin, this little up post inside the lock, and that is a way to guide a pipe key onto the drill pin to center it, which aligns the key properly so that it can work. But again, I won't talk about this too much because it's just a lever pack with levers lifted to the right height to allow the bolt stump to move through the gating. The last type of lock I think we should mention is the higher security cousin of the non-curtain lever lock, the curtain lever lock. You can see it has many, many, many features which are similar. And indeed, it operates in a very similar way. I'll put the key in through the back turn the key, we lift the lever pack, allow the bolt stump to align with the gating, the key pulls um, not on a talon at this point, but the curtain itself engages with the bolt a bit like a cam and pulls it across. There we go. And back again if we want it to. So what's the difference between the curtained and the non-curtained version of these lever locks? Well, the difference is in the name, really. The, this lock here is a curtain lever lock, has a curtain, and that's this whole mechanism on the inside. And this acts as a sort of shroud for the inside of the key and makes picking it with traditional wire tools a lot more difficult. In fact, it's not the key in this case which necessarily acts on the bolt itself, but it's the curtain acting like a cam which engages with the bolt and retracts it across as long as the key itself has lifted the lever to the right height. You'll also notice that this lock actually has false notches. So it's got some fake notches which act a bit like the gating and can engage with the bolt stump and trap it if the levers are not lifted to the correct height. The other feature of this particular lock is that the belly of the lever um, are so low that they are even touching the curtain which makes putting a lever wire, a lever pick, in underneath it extremely difficult. So there we are. Hopefully now we know a little bit more about the terminology and types for lever locks. And in my upcoming videos in this series, we'll be talking about picking techniques for the non-curtained lever locks, the lever padlocks, the curtain lever locks, and then some advanced picking skills as well. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next part. Bye.